In the week leading up to Jungle Cruise's release, Twitter was filled with praise and joy over Disney's new swashbuckling adventure, Jungle Cruise. Another film that's somehow based on a ride in a theme park. As someone who's not really a fan of rides, I still can't fathom how you can get an entire feature script out of five minutes of a roller coaster. Then I saw the trailers and I thought that some of the CGI looked appalling. Another red flag came for me when I realised that Jack Whitehall was one of the main characters. Americans won't know him as intimately as us Brits will. He's a stand-up comedian who's made quite a successful career out of being what is essentially an upper middle class wuss. I'm not entirely sure why he suddenly started appearing in Amazon original series and Disney blockbusters after being in BBC comedies and doing travel shows on Netflix. He must have a really good agent. Either way though, I thought that Whitehall would annoy me, but The Rock's charm and charisma would take me through Jungle Cruise and it would indeed be the swashbuckling thrill ride that critics had promised. Oh, how wrong I was. After now watching Jungle Cruise, I feel like I've watched a completely different film to everyone else. It's not fun, it's not thrilling, and it's certainly not an adventure I'd ever want to be a part of. It's definitely swashbuckling, but really that's not the kind of word I'd use to describe something I want to watch. Clearly, if you like this kind of film, then you'll probably like it, but for me, Jungle Cruise was honestly one of the most boring, insufferable films I've ever had the displeasure to watch. The Rock is fine. He plays the same character he's always played in everything, and that's fine. That's what he's good at. His running gag is that he's always doing dad jokes. I like them. They were fun, and were a lot more fun than any of the actual action that went on. The Rock's character has a plot point halfway through the film, which comes out of nowhere, and wasn't set up at at all. It adds an interesting element to the film that wasn't advertised, but sadly at that point I was already dying of boredom, so it wasn't enough to bring me back in. Emily Blunt is also fun. Her and Johnson definitely seemed like they were having at least some fun on set. Her character is the main driving force of the plot. It's her who's on a Phileas Fogg style mission to prove the sexist scientists wrong and find the MacGuffin in the jungle that I've already forgotten the name of. Blunt isn't an actress that usually plays herself, but here it definitely feels like she is. She's a posh English lady with a sense of humour and a confident attitude. She's also a bit of a stereotypical character in this type of film and she does have some moments of pretty poor acting. However, it's with every other single character where this film turns into a complete pile of crap. First of all, Jack Whitehall. He is insufferable. He has one emotion throughout this entire film which is just terror. His acting is unsurprisingly atrocious and he has absolutely zero charisma. The character he's playing, Emily Blunt's brother, is also annoying so it's fitting they've got such an irritating actor to play him. These kinds of films always seem to think they need to have someone who's incredibly uncomfortable in any other situation to pop through at them. These characters can be funny, but when you get someone like Whitehall to play them and you have untalented writers, then moaning characters become a lot more like moaning people in real life. I'm still not sure why he's in such a big film, but I'm very worried that Disney thinks they've managed to get a hold of the next James Corden. I would be willing to put a large amount of money on Whitehall having some form of chat show in the very near future. The other main characters are all some kind of antagonist or another. There's Paul Giamatti as a cruise line owner who Johnson works for. There's Jesse Plemons as a German prince who's after the MacGuffin for Germany's war effort. And then there's Edgar Ramirez as Aguirre, the conquistador explorer. It's a running gag on the internet that The Amazing Spider-Man 2 has too many villains, and funnily enough that had three villains as well, and one of them was by Bob Paul Giamatti. You'd think studios would learn this is a problem, but as we all know, Hollywood isn't very self-aware. Giamatti's villain isn't even really worth talking about. He's got a weird accent and doesn't do much other than moan at Dwayne Johnson for a bit. He's got a parrot that talks, and I love parrots, but when it talks it's just a voice actor. You'd think Disney would have enough money to spend on an actually trained parrot. Jesse Plemons can't do a German accent. I'm unsure why they got an American to do this role. Usually villainous German roles are played by someone from the UK, but really I think we've moved past that point. And there are plenty of German speaking actors working in the business these days that would have suited the role far better and would have made the character more intimidating. As it goes, Jesse Plemons is actually barely in the film and doesn't really provide much of an obstacle to the main group. He's more of an antagonist than Paul Giamatti, of course, but that's not very hard. The true villain is Edgar Ramirez is Aguirre, who's been cursed to never leave the Amazon River, and the MacGuffin is his way out of his miserable life as a snake man. His powers and origins aren't explained massively well. He has a group of fellow conquistadors with him, one of whom turns into a honey monster, which didn't make any sense to me. That being said though, the best parts of the film are the parts that flash back to his past. Like all of the villains, he's not really in the film enough to be compelling or interesting, but he's the one that's closest to being that. The big takeaway from Jungle Cruise that I got was just how awful it looked. Not only did Edgar Ramirez and his crew look terrible, but Dwayne Johnson has a pet leopard which doesn't look real at all. Most egregiously though, the whole film takes place on a soundstage, so the entire jungle looks completely fake. This film is trying so hard to take the place of Pirates of the Caribbean, but Curse of the Black Pearl came out 20 or so years ago now, and that looks so much better than Jungle Cruise. The ghost crew alone look far more intimidating than the terrible conquistadors in this. Jungle Cruise is an appalling attempt at trying to take people back to a bygone era of adventure akin to Indiana Jones and romancing the stone.
Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt try their very best to make this a lot more fun than it is, but they're ultimately drowned by the terrible writing, boring directing, and embarrassing special effects. Jungle Cruise gets a date score of four. Happy dating, you loners.